there is an oily chemical within Xeracote, Bacote, and some other exotic woods that doesn't allow a lot of polyurethanes to harden. So it's got the roasted look without the brittleness of a roasted neck. So, Man, I don't know what to say. Uh, you don't need to say anything. Oh my goodness, that is gorgeous. Oh my goodness, that's amazing! So. Wow, that is beautiful. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. There's not much, but that might be enough to get us what we want. Well, that tape worked really quite well. I've got just a couple little areas like right here that you can see where I've got to do a little touch up. As I'm preparing this guitar before I do the staining, like I said, I'm going to get my drilling done, get these back plates all ready and everything. The next thing is working on putting magnets in. Instead of putting screws through the wood, I'm gonna use magnets inside here. And my intention at this point is to put a magnet here. I'm gonna put a magnet here and a magnet here. These magnets I got from a hobby store. They are exactly one fourth inch round. I'm just gonna use a fourth inch round drill bit to go the depth of the magnet. And then what we're gonna try first is something that I saw somebody else do and that was using the head of a nail and just sink that in because this is a whole lot more thin. And so we're just gonna try using that, use a little CA glue and see what we get. This is the first one I'm doing this way. So live and learn, right? Before I glue these in, I'm checking polarity on the one so that I have the direction of the magnets all going the same direction for polarity. Oh, see so you now that pulled it together that way and that pushes it. I can feel it pushing. So that's gonna be down. Was well, I already checked one of them and now I gotta do it over again because they stuck together. They're pretty strong magnets. Uh, but I'm doing this, they're gonna stick either way to the metal, but if I decide to use magnets on both sides, then I wanna make sure that they are pulling together. Hope that makes sense. If you play with magnets, you'll figure it out. I know that for at least one person out there, this little tip is gonna be worth watching my episode. I was talking to you about putting in the heads of nails, like filing down the nail, so you just had the nail head to put into these little holes. And I thought, why not use just a small little washer? So I went back to Baumgars, the hardware store, and started to look for washers. And as I'm going through the bins, I notice in some of the little bit larger washer bins that there are these round metal solid pieces those are the donut hole so to speak those are the middle of the washer that's been cut out they're the garbage it's what they throw away and they're the exact perfect size which will work as the metal piece that's going to go into here which is a perfect fit that's going to connect with my magnets Well guys, while I let the glue dry on those magnets and all, I'm going to do a little bit of an interjection on staining. And I'm gonna be staining the neck for this guitar. I got a maple neck, which I want. It's a flamed maple neck. And I really like the look of roasted maple necks. What I don't like about roasted maple necks is how brittle they are. They're dried and they, they crack easier. So I love that look. Man, maple neck, or uh, yeah, flame maple neck. So what I'm going to do is because this has this dark wenge in it, 
I'm actually going to use a dark walnut stain. Now this is not the typical type of stain that I use on my guitars. And then I'm going to go with another color over top of it. So let's see what we get with that. I'm experimenting here, but I want to get somewhat the feel. I don't think it's going to look exactly like a roasted maple neck, but I think we can get close to that look. What I ended up doing was I used the dark walnut and then I added some of the ebony to the dark walnut. This is what I was looking for uh, to get that roasted look to it. So it's got the roasted look without the brittleness of a roasted neck. While the Roasting of the necks, of the maple necks, helps to stabilize the neck because you're taking the moisture content out so there's going to be less warping and that type thing later on. So it will stabilize the wood. It does make it more brittle. So I'm just going to say this. If you decide you want to use roasted maple, because I'm not going to say that you should never use it, um, because it is beautiful and it does stabilize the wood, but as I've said, it's, it's more brittle. Especially watch when it comes time for you to pilot your holes along your headstock. When you're drilling these holes, make absolute certain that your holes for your screws are basically just slightly smaller than the screw itself. What will happen is you've got a nice little line here, and once you start screwing in, you might get one, two, three in, and all of a sudden, this part of your headstock is gonna crack or crack off but come on that's beautiful huh now this is you know i this is without any polyurethane or anything on yet this is just the dried stained wood see i love that type of stuff and I, what i like about this is it does give it that aged look which is going to go really well it's going to have a definite aged appearance to it so i'm getting a little more excited about this uh as you know, I did not intend to come into this guitar project making an aged Telecaster. But because of the yellowing on this, then I thought, yeah, I'm going to go with try and get this looking a little bit more aged. And so I probably have in this 80% dark walnut, 20% ebony is about the mixture that I had to get that coloring. What I need to do before I do anything else is clean up this mess. I am just, it's, it turns into a disaster area really quick. And when you've got a messy desk, that's when things start getting scratched and you start dropping things on guitar parts and stuff, which I don't want to do. Woody and I have been chatting and here on the, where these knobs are going to be, he would like to have a little bit of a countersunk circle in there, just barely allowing some of this maple underneath to be seen around the edge of those knobs. There's not a lot of wood here any longer because we've already thinned it out. And in order to make this work, what I will be doing is I'm going to add a piece back in to here. This wouldn't uh, be something that I would normally normally do but I want to make certain that we've got enough solidity back in there so I'm going to pressure glue that in for uh, a day so that it's got plenty of pressure on there and this piece of wood here will help support it. I am putting in these earplugs which I cut apart so that the glue doesn't come through and get on my nicely <laughs> newly done stain job here. I'm also going to obviously have to be careful about the wood. So I'll put a cloth down on it and a piece of wood over that and then clamp on uh, to make sure that we have got pressure in there like we need without scratching up the body. Because uh, I sure prefer not to have to redo my stain job here. Um, all right, so let me get some glue in there. Ah, uh, Woody, you're scaring the bejeebers out of me, buddy. I don't like doing this at all. Not at this stage of the game anyway, but it's it's that one looks like it's gonna be just fine. Gonna take a little sanding in there, of course. All right. 
Well, one step done, got them drilled out. Thankfully, I didn't destroy the edges or anything. Uh, it's gonna be kind of this type of a look where these will be countersunk. Uh, next though, I need to start sanding this and smoothing out these edges. Again, that looking nice without scratching up all my nice uh, stain here. So, uh, and I still gotta do a little work on the stain touch-ups and stuff. So I guess if I do need to restain, it's not that big of a deal, but I'd really prefer not to. For those of you that are just getting into maybe doing some guitar building or toying with doing your own thing, uh, I just want to give you a little bit of a reality check. And it's just fine because I don't really uh, mind sanding. It's something, that, well, I got a little spot there that I got to take care of yet. Since the last clip that you just saw where I was getting ready to drill these, I have now spent two and a half hours sanding on these little spots. And I think a lot of people just don't realize what it takes uh, to do this kind of stuff and to do it with the fine uh, with the fine sandpapers and get it to where you want it. Now the thing is, you don't have to do things like this. You don't have to, you know, it gives yourself more work to do this. Now Woody wanted to have this and I was very glad to oblige and to, to do this. Um, but I don't think that a lot of people realize, like, uh, like that first guitar that I built, I've got these divots in there where my knobs are at. I spent three hours per hole, five holes, uh, sanding those to get them to where they were, which is 15 hours. Now, obviously, if you're in a company and you're manufacturing guitars, you're not going to do that. Uh, you're going to have other ways to do it, uh, you know, like PRS has these little divots in there. I'm sure they've got a really fantastic way to, to sand those. Um, I don't have all those kinds of tools and equipment, and I'm sure that uh, maybe I need to look into something like that. But to, to just do that, it takes more than you think it will. <laughs> This is coming along pretty well, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just pleased with it. I really hope Woody likes it. Woody shared with me yesterday a clip of his son on the news, because yesterday was Juneteenth. Uh, it was June 19, 1865, that in Texas, General uh, Gordon uh, Granger, General Gordon Granger emancipated the slaves and so in Texas. And so Juneteenth started to be celebrated actually by churches the very next year in Texas in 1866. Anyway, here's a quick little clip of his son preparing for a Juneteenth festival in Milwaukee. My father's a musician and a producer. I had the privilege to be on American Idol season 11 and I've been singing since I was three years old from the Boys and Girls Club to Youth Leadership Academy. Montreal will take his musical skills to the JAMA 98.3 stage at Juneteenth this year to help people better understand how music and mental health go hand in hand. We're going to use this time to perform and educate how we can use music and mindfulness as a better way to cope. Research shows that relaxing music has the ability to lower heart rate, blood pressure, and can even help ease pain, stress, and anxiety. Doing evidence-based research backed by science to show if you listen to certain songs, whether it be the frequency or the tempo or the pace, we actually watch people's heart rate decrease. Montreal is also a mentor at Running Rebels, where he holds workshops with young people to help ease their minds from everyday stress. I was just really impressed by it. His son obviously has a real heart for people and young people, which is awesome. Keep fighting for joy there, Montreal Kane. Uh, and thanks for inspiring the world. Well, I've just set these knobs in here for us to take a look to kind of see what it's going to look like. I, I like it more than I thought I was going to. I do like that. The one thing that I can't quite do that he was wondering about as well, uh, Woody had asked about doing this one as well. This is where the three-way switch goes. Problem is, is that where it's routed on the back side, I just don't have enough wood back there to put it in there. Now, we added wood on the back of these and that worked out just fine. The problem is, the maple, there was still a little ring of maple here and here. There's not a ring of maple in this one. So I could go down, but I would never get to maple. And that's what the idea was, unless I, 
I suppose I glued maple on there, but I already think it's going to be too tight anyway. I couldn't get another circle in there nicely. So we're just going to leave that one as it is, and we'll have these two. I think that will look really good. Just about to the point where we're going to be able to put these two body parts together, but there's a few things I need to do first. I want to talk about a few things first. One, I've got to add my frets back in. The reason why I have got this, you can probably see that there is some clear coat on this, but there's not clear coat on this yet, and I'm still going to be bringing them together. Here's the deal. So I added a diamond piece of pearl that's inlaid, and then Woody has these logos that he wants to add in, and so they're just kind of tiny there, but... He is Woody Chili Sauce Cane, and he has got a studio called Studio C, I believe is what it's called. I better check with Woody on that, but I think it's Studio C is the name of his studio, and he's got a chili pepper for his logo. We started off looking at putting just one big chili pepper there, but the logo is actually red and green, and that big chili just kind of looked out of place, I thought. You know, you have kind of an elegant looking fretboard, and then the big chili, bright red and green, just kind of stood out in a way that I was like, ah, I don't, I'm not sure that that goes well. So I went to go with something a little more subtle, so we still put them in there. His logo's on the guitar. He's got it there, kind of fun. So in order to put the logo on, because the logo itself is a very thin decal, you have to have some clear coat on and then put the decal on and then clear coat over top of it. And you want them thin, you don't want just like a sticker because a sticker would be way too thick. They've gotta be a very delicate, thin decal. The other thing is, here's an interesting thing to talk about, and that is Zeracote. Zeracote is an exotic wood. When I first started working with the Zeracote on this guitar, one of my Patreons, who's a friend, uh, was talking to me and he just said, he said, I wonder if it's like Bacote, which is a really oily wood, and there's a lot of people who have a problem finishing, you know, putting clear coat on, on Bacote, and so, I thought, well, I better do some digging and looking. So in the meantime, that was a few months ago, I've been doing research on Bacote and Zeracote and a host of other exotic woods that are kind of an oilier wood. And what I did find out, because I wanted to experiment. So I took uh, Zeracote, I took some different Zeracote, uh, just little pieces that I had, and I sprayed them, and I sprayed them with... The, this clear coat. I sprayed them with the 1K clear coat by Duplicolor and both of those, now the 1K took about three weeks and it finally was feeling like it was drying but it still was a little bit tacky. As well as this, man, four, five weeks and it was still feeling wet. It would not solidify. There is an oily chemical within Zeracote, Bacote, and some other exotic woods that doesn't allow a lot of polyurethanes to harden. The answer is not to buy hardener because if you just put hardener on it, uh, you can uh, it can react in various ways. One, it just might liquefy it all. The other thing is, is that if it does work with a hardener in it, uh, it can harden too much too quick, become brittle, and it's not a very good coat. So in all of my reading, what I found out, you wanna spray some shellac uh, on it first, and that will seal it. Shellac is a petroleum-based clear coat, and the way it interacts with Zeracote and Bacote is it goes on and it dries really fast. In fact, I sprayed this 10 minutes ago and it's dry, so with shellac. So you put that shellac on and then, uh, so that's on, give it just a very, very light sanding just to make sure that it's got some, uh, you know, you just have to, roughen up that wood a little bit so your poly coat's gonna stick on. And then I'm gonna be using that diamond coat over top of that. Um, but it, it's a trick. So if you're using a, an exotic wood, do not just use some polyurethane without knowing how to clear coat exotic woods. 
let's start getting these frets put into this fretboard so that we can attach it back to the uh, the guitar. Now the reason why I want to put these frets in ahead of time, my fret arbor will not allow this whole guitar body to fit into it, at least on these frets in this area up here. But the rest of it would be just fine. So I could do that. Um, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and get the frets put back in, and then we're going to attach it to the body.